Hello, and welcome to Agrosa Physics. Today is day 40, and what I'd like to do is a few sample problems dealing with Newton's laws. And what I'd like to start with is a second law problem set. We'll do a few problems where we have to determine either the acceleration first and then use F equals MA to find the force, or perhaps we'll use um, F equals MA to find an acceleration and then work backwards to find something from our kinematics equations. Um, perhaps we'll find the displacement or the final velocity or average velocity. Um, that being said, there are other types of questions that can come up, but I think it's important to do a few of the basic sample problems. And I want you to realize that there's not a new concept here other than the F equals MA equation. Um, we're still going to use a givens list. We're still going to set up the equation so that we are looking for certain variables. The, the difference with this is that it may take two steps to solve for the final answer. Forces and masses may be involved, and what we'll do is use those um, to either get acceleration or to find an acceleration first to get a force. Before, with a kinematics equation, mass didn't matter, um, but once again, with forces, that can, um, the mass will be a significant impact on what the acceleration actually uh, is for whatever object that's you know, under the, under the, undergoing the force. Um, as far as Newton's third law, I'd like to look at a sample problem where we're dealing with action-reaction pairs, um, something visual that you can at least see how I would write out the action-reaction pairs. Um, it's important to know that uh, action, you know, every action has an equal and opposite reaction. So the forces are the same, the directions are opposite, and the objects involved um, are merely, there's only two, and they're going to be flipped. So if we have a book laying on a table, um, the book and the table would be one action-reaction pair, and then the table and the book would be the other action-reaction pair. The book will push on the table down, and the table will push upward on the book. So we'll do a couple of sample problems, but today is going to be a, a light day, no new concepts, but just a few examples of how to use the concepts we've been talking about over the past few days. So we'll use the whiteboard now, and we'll um, look at a few sample problems. Thank you. Well, here's a practice problem we can look at in terms of finding the force on a vehicle. What we have is my Ford Taurus station wagon. It's a 2003, and I looked in the manual to see the, the gross weight. And it's um, in kilograms, the gross mass, is 2232. So I know the mass of my vehicle. And I also looked up online that it goes from 0 to 60 miles per hour in 10 seconds. I didn't actually test this. I, I looked at stats online. Um, my car can barely make it to the 45 zone, but when it, was, it, when it was in top condition 10 years ago, I'm sure it could have done 0 to 60 in about the 10 seconds. Well, of course, 60 miles per hour is going to be a problem, so we're just going to take that. I'm going to get rid of it right away. Miles per hour, and hopefully you remember how to convert. One mile goes on the bottom is 1609 meters. And then I want to get rid of the hours, so I'm going to put one hour on the top. And the tricky part about an hour is a lot of people want to just put 60 seconds in an hour, but it's 60 minutes and then 60 seconds. So I just do that twice, and I get 3,600 seconds. Well, the miles will cancel. The hours will cancel. And I'll be left, yep, meters per second. So let me get my calculator. Let me get my calculator. I lost my calculator. Où est la bibliothèque? All right, I found my calculator. And you end up with 60 times 1609 equals, divided by 3600, and I get 26.82 meters per second. Well now we should be able to solve the problem. We start with our Givens list. The mass is 2232. VI is 0. 
VF is 26.82, and time was 10 seconds. We're going to find A, and then we're going to find the force. Now with VF, VI, and T, I'm going to use the third equation, VF equals VI plus AT. So 26.82 meters per second equals zero plus A times 10 seconds. This math is pretty easy. I'm going to divide 10 into 26.82, so I'm going to get 2.682 meters per second squared equals A, and then I'm going to do F equals MA and F equals 2232 kilograms times 2.682 meters per second squared. So 2232 times 2.682 equals the force of my car in order to do a, an acceleration of 0 to 60 in 10 seconds 5,986.2 newtons. Now, of course, that's an average force, just like the acceleration is not actually constant the whole time because of gear shifting. And my uh, Ford Taurus apparently looks like, a, like an eagle, um, cross between an eagle and a post office truck. But the force with the data we have is about 6,000 newtons. Well, my wife and I are always competing over who has the cooler car. So she has a 2008 Grand Caravan. And I looked up the stats for that. I want to see if my car exerts more force than hers. Although I know hers is a minivan and mine's a station wagon, and both of them aren't really cars. But that's beside the point. Point is, I want to win. So what I did is I looked up the unladen weight and it came out to be in kilograms when I converted it, 1938.2 kilograms. I then looked up the zero to 60 miles per hour statistics. VI is zero. VF was, of course, 26.82. We just did that conversion in the last problem. And the time, uh oh, 7.9 seconds. So it does it over a much shorter time period than my car. My car was over 10 seconds. However, the mass is a little lighter. So my car is uh, much more bulky, I guess. Now, if I find the acceleration from this, I'm going to do VF equals VI plus AT. I'm going to calculate 26.82 equals 0 plus A times 7.9 seconds. And what I'll do now is take 26.82, 26.82 divided by 7.9, and I get three for the acceleration, 0.4 meters per second squared. Now, F equals MA, mass was 1938.2 kilograms, and the acceleration was 3.4 meters per second squared. And of course, I rounded that, but since it's still in my calculator, I'm going to do 1938.2 times answer, second answer. Oh, no. 6580 newtons. Ugh. The force of the minivan is greater than the force of the station wagon. So I lose this battle, but... I'll come up with another way I win in some other problem. But the Dodge Grand Caravan um, exerts a greater force on the vehicle and has a greater acceleration from 0 to 60 miles per hour. Of course, this is in peak condition. <laughs> Neither of our cars are in peak condition at this point. I'd like to do a sample Newton's third law problem now. And what we're going to look at is a table that has a book resting on it. And the book, let's say the book has a mass of 3 kilograms. And we want to discuss the action-reaction pair of the book and the table. So we have a book on a table. And I know I always have to label my drawings because they are not all that good. 
Now, how would I find the weight of the book? Because we want to deal with forces. Well, Fg equals mg is one version of the force of gravity equation. You can do W equals mg, weight equals mass times gravity, or you could just merely do F equals ma and know that the acceleration is negative 9.8. All three of these can be used to find the weight of an object which is effectively the pull of the Earth on the object. So all you'll have to do is take, I'm going to do the FG because that's the one I like the best. And that's not better than any other ones. I just like them. Now, you'll notice I'm not using my negative 9.8. And that's because when we're dealing with gravity, we're always going to know that the direction is down. If you put a negative value, that's going to be OK for now. Um, but you'll see in a, in a few days, that the direction of the forces will be denoted on diagrams that we're about to start drawing. But if I just do 3 times 9.8, I'm getting 29.4 newtons. So the book has a mass of 3, but let's change that to a weight of 29.4 newtons. And I'll get rid of this set of equations here. Now, let's discuss the action-reaction pair. The book is going to push onto the table. So the book pushes down on the table with a force of 29.4 newtons. And the first one's always the toughest to, to write because you have to come up with all the words. But then, once you have the first one drawn, all you have to do is switch a few of the words and the direction. For example, remember, book table, the, op, the action, if that's the action, the reaction is going to be, and I'll just label this action, the reaction is that the table pushes upward on the book with a force of 29.4 newtons. So all I did is I switched the word here, the direction here, and the word here. And that's as easy as it gets when you're talking about an action-reaction pair. Now, for some reason, you have more than two objects involved here or the arrows are in the same direction, or the numbers are different, you don't have an action-reaction pair. And questions are often asked on the regions about action-reaction pairs. Now, let's look at another part of this. Let's say that the table, all of a sudden, someone shoots a portal gun right here, and the book is no longer touching the table. So the book is now falling through the air. So the book is being pulled downward. Let's talk about the action reaction of that. The action is the book is pulled down, and I'll do an arrow for down, by what? Well, the object that's actually pulling the book down is the earth, by the earth with a force of 29.4 newtons. Same force. So let's think about the reaction. And this is one that is the trickiest of them all. And if I switch the words here, the, the titles, it's going to be the Earth is pulled up by the book with a force of 29.4 newtons. So the Earth is actually being affected by this book's flight. And that's the reality. The difference is the book had a mass of 3 kilograms. The Earth has a mass of 5.98 times 10 to the 24 kilograms. So if I were to write that out, 598 
1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22 kilograms. That's a significant difference than a 3. So quite a few zeros, and that's why you don't see the Earth accelerating every time you jump off of a chair or jump down from a ladder or something like that. Um, the Earth is pulled by you when you're in the air. The Earth is pulled by the book when it's falling, but because the Earth's mass is significantly larger than yours or the book, you don't appear to move at all. And now our acceleration, the book's acceleration in any object near the Earth's surface is going to still be 9.8 meters per second squared. 